Barrage versus AIM Corporation. Counsel. Good afternoon, Your Honors. May I reserve three minutes for rebuttal? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honors, I think we must be mindful of the procedural posture of this case. Uh, a fact that respondents are keen to want to overlook. This is a 3211 motion. The entirety of their brief uh, is uh, attempts to resolve issues of fact that haven't even been raised at this stage. The lower courts decided this pursuant to 3211A1, documentary evidence, and you would not find that in any of the mention of that in any of respondents' briefs. The standard here is quite high. It is limited to the four corners of the insurance contract and requires that the document itself establish that my client's claim needs to be dismissed. And that is impossible because there is a condition that must be fulfilled in order for her to have the right to sue under the contract. That condition requires the property to be fully rehabilitated, repaired. This court stated in Executive Plaza. During the time that um, passed, what, if anything, did your client do to indicate whether or not there were impediments to the condition precedent being satisfied? Sure. Again, I, you know, with, with the mind to that we are at a 3211 stage, she alleged in her complaint that the repairs were complex and that they would have required multiple years of construction under the best of circumstances. How much time had passed? How much at time that had, point? had passed at, at what point? When she asserted that it, it was going to take multiple of years. Well, had she alerted them in the interval of any obstacles or uh, concerns that they weren't holding up to their part? Yes, it's throughout the complaint. There are several... Uh, at no, I'm not just saying throughout the complaint. You're saying that these actions were actually taken by her during the interval of time that passed? Yes, she alleged that she did those things in the complaint. So she alleged that, they, that the insurance company uh, assigned a succession of claims adjusters, none of whom would take responsibility. They forbade her from com commencing the repairs until their expert uh, inspected the property. Uh, they sent inspectors that had no uh, capacity to understand the engineering challenges posed by the structural damage. That all goes to me, I'm sorry here, that seems to me to all go to whether it could be completed in a reasonable time. And it's, it doesn't seem to me that that's really the issue here. It, it, Executive Plaza, which I think is a motion to dismiss, a certified question here, but it's a motion to dismiss in federal court. It, it seems to me the issue is what did she, insure due to alert the insurance company that this was taking longer, right? Mm -hmm. Or, and the reasons why it was taking longer, um, to give them notice in some way that the two year period wouldn't be complied with. Because I think Executive Plaza, as I read it, doesn't say the two year period's unreasonable. Right. It just says in a particular case, it may be unreasonable to complete the repairs within that time. But this case seems to me a little bit different because it's not, I don't think they're arguing you couldn't complete the repairs. I think they're arguing we didn't know what you were doing until six years later. Well, they haven't answered the complaint. I mean, again, we are, if, if you're looking at 3211A1, documentary evidence, they don't have it. The lower courts are obviously incorrect. So then you must proceed to an issue uh, that the lower courts did not decide, which is 3211A7, which is did she fail to state, did her pleadings fail to state a cause of action? We aren't. Well, okay. they've put in a document that is you have a two year limitation period here, which would apply. I mean, there's nothing on its face that says that two year limitation period's unreasonable, as I read Executive Plaza. So what have you shown to, sh to show, to demonstrate that that application of the two-year period here in these circumstances would be unreasonable. They put in the document showing the limitation. What have you put in to counter that that would be unreasonable to enforce here? Well, they put they put in the contract, which is what we're looking and at. And that right? has a two-year limitation. It period. has a two-year, and it requires all repairs to be completed before suit can be commenced. Uh, in that regard, the contract almost mirrors the contract in Executive right. Plaza. And what is the circumstances that you have raised to show it's unreasonable to enforce that here? Okay, so we're talking about a 3211A7 right. issue, not A1. 
right? Okay, so then you just look at the four corners of the pleading. And she's adequately pleaded it. It's, it's throughout the brief. So I guess was, to Judge Troutman's point, though, where in that complaint specifically does it indicate that she, res she preserved her rights or she notified the company? Okay. Where is that? So in her pleading, she states that immediately upon uh, the, the incident, she notified the insurance company that she wanted to pursue a replacement value uh, recovery. She alleges that the insurance company immediately responded that according to their estimate, re full replacement value would be $1.4 million to, to complete. Evidencing through her pleading that they knew that she wanted a full replacement value, that's what she was going for. They used their estimate of $1.4 million replacement value from the start to say she's underinsured. And that, that began the long uh, steady drip of frustration and unfair business practices. So they were on notice from the beginning. She, she alleges throughout her pleadings, we tried to uh, hire uh, people to come in to uh, do the work. There were liens placed on the building because the, the tower insurance uh, company refused to pay the And did they know vendors. that? Is there anything in the record that the insurance company knew that? It doesn't matter at this stage. Because it it, we're looking at the pleading. So once you say I want replacement value, you could come back 10 years later and say done. Uh, no, I think that the six-year statute of limitations would be applicable. And, and so no, any I'm, time within six years, you could just come back and say done. To avoid 3211 dismissal. If you allege <clears throat> that the repairs were complex and weren't going to be able to be completed within two years, which she did, and lay out a, a series of allegations that... Their entire arguments have been disputing the, the uh, veracity of those let, allegations. Let me ask you directly. Does she allege somewhere that she notified them, I can't complete these repairs in two years? Uh, in so many words, did I, I can't complete these repairs in two years? No. But if you look at the gravamen... Or could one uh, liberally construe that from the complaint? Yes. Oh, you certainly Where can. Where would... Yeah, I'm oh, asking. Oh, okay. Uh, appendix... Uh, I to give you the citation, yes. 20, 22, 27, and 28. <coughs> Would you say those numbers again, 20, please? 20, mm -hmm. 22, 27, and 28. So and is your argument that uh, there was sufficient notice if you read the pleadings, or there shouldn't, there's no notice requirement at all? No, there's clearly notice was given because she alleged that immediately after the fire destroyed her building, a series of events took place between her and Tower Insurance Company. That is sufficient to say that they are on notice. They aren't claiming that they weren't on notice. They are well, claiming. Well, notice of, of the damage. The question is whether or not there's notice that it won't be repaired, if that's what she's looking for, full replacement within two years. Right. I mean. And that's what you're saying. If we look, go to 20, 22, 27, 28, mm -hmm. you will see a history. Liberally construe those paragraphs, and that satisfies this requirement. Now, at this stage. Now. Yeah, no, no. On right. a motion to dismiss, liberal construction. I agree. Right. Assuming all facts asserted true. Yes, which is what you did, well, what the federal court did in Executive Plaza was to say, you know, there's a motion to dismiss. Let's send it back for discovery to take place to, to see if the factual allegations that they want this court to resolve are borne out, or my clients are borne out, or there are internal emails or documents. I mean, we're dealing with an insurance company, and we need to consider the public policy uh, of a decision like this. Are we going to make it this easy? If, all, if only we drag our feet and all we have to do is frustrate the claimant at every turn and that there's a secret menu item of, uh, that is not in the contract that you need to bring a f essentially frivolous lawsuit before you're entitled to bring it to show us that you really are serious, otherwise you can't uh, ultimately sue. But in Executive Plaza, the plaintiff alleged the actions that they took. Right, yeah. to, to allow the court to make an assessment if it could, in fact, be completed in two years. I mean, they laid out what they did to restore the property, um, and we don't have that here. You do have that. She, set, she lays out that she spent $1.3 million of her own money. She lays out that she was hiring and being frustrated by hiring vendors that required uh, pre-approval. Then they weren't paid. Then liens are being put against the property. Then she can't do anything until uh, the appraisers that they send out there. But prior it, to her complaint, what, if anything, do you believe she was required to do to keep the insurance company, if at all, informed that the condition preceding 
could not reasonably be completed. Sure. I think that we need to look at this from a practical standpoint of how people deal with their insurance companies, all right? And instead of an esoteric uh, assertion that, you know, there are certain benchmarks that people have to take. She's, she's alleging she's being in constant contact with these people. She's being bounced around, likely bounced around in phone trees, as we're all used to doing. But, but where that, is there a specific, right here, Oh, um, where is there something specific in the record you can point us to which says that she notified them that it was going to take more than two years? I think that if you liberally construe the complaint and the allegations that she's making as but, to but the But specifically, uh, you, you definitely, I, I, I take it you, you are referring to the allegations that she tried to call them and it was difficult and there were phone trees. But is there, are there any allegations about the content of those communications which indicate that she was uh, apprising them that it would take more than two years? Or is it that your, your position that she doesn't have to do that? What I'm saying is, is that at this stage, not only do you take what is alleged to be true, you draw every favorable inference. So the only inference that can be had from her allegations is that she's in constant contact with these people. She may be in constant contact, but I'm asking whether there's anything, or, or there may be allegations to that effect, whether there's anything that specifically goes to the content of those communications and whether it included any reference to how long it would take. But, Your Honor, again, we need to look at this uh, from, from the ground level. I'm just asking what the record right. reflects. Uh, it may be right. no. So as two years passes and she's still in communication with these people mm -hmm. about why isn't this getting done, it's self evident mm -hmm. that the repairs have taken longer than two years. Otherwise, she wouldn't be constantly okay. keeping in touch with and these do people. And you, do you agree that, that uh, she has to apprise them that it's going to take more than two years, whether she has done that in light of the communications or not. But if she had not been in contact with the insurance company at all, um, but she could allege that it in fact took more than two years, what would your, your position be then? Under that hypothetical, I would I mean, I would need to know what the allegations were. Well, Why? let's assume the allegations are that she is not in contact with the insurer, but she has alleged that, in fact, the repairs or replacement took more than two years. And they're trying to dismiss strictly on a statute of limitations defense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm asking whether she has to notify them in any way that she can't do it within two years. No, I don't think that's not in the contract. So, so I mean, if it's in the contract, you have to notify us promptly. So the, so the two-year limitation cannot be applied in any case where she can show down the road that it took more than two years to actually complete the repairs. Well, so, I, sorry, I see your lights on. Can I complete the? Yeah, please do. Yeah. So if the contract says that you need to notify them within a certain amount of time, I think that would present a different issue. That isn't the issue present before the court. What's present before the quarter allegations that it was an immediate notification and a constant battle with these people for over six years. Now, they weren't battling with her because they thought that it was the repairs were done. And she sued promptly within the, the normal statute of limitations shortly after she completed the repairs. Thank, Thank you. you. May it please the court. Kevin Buckley, Mount Cotton, Woman and Greengrass on behalf of the insurance company respondents. Uh, this court has laid out a uh, framework for what an insured should do when coming up against a contractual uh, suit limitation period. And that begins with your decision in Blitman. In Blitman, the insured, like here, said it was unreasonable to have to sue the insurance company within the 12-month period. It was commercially impractical, is what the court said. And this court rejected that argument and said, you have to do something as an insured to protect your rights. Well, the difference between this case and Blitman is this contract has a provision that precludes suit until a certain event happens, right? And that wasn't present in Blitman. Well, in, in Blitman, you had the, the two-year suit limitation provision like you do here. And in Blitman, the insurance company did not deny the claim they were continuing to investigate. So arguably, you could say there was nothing to sue upon. 
Yet this court said, do you have options in Blitman? And the options were, and they're very reasonable, and I'll explain why. The options were, you can approach the insurance company and request an extension on the suit limitation provision. The contractual provision, you're asking the insurance company, can we extend this? Or you can commence suit. So let's go to the first one. If you approach an insurance company and ask them, can you extend the suit limitation provision because I am dil diligently working on repairing my property. I've contacted the building department. I've done X, Y, and Z. This is all I've done. But I cannot complete the repairs within two years. Would you extend it by six months? The insurance company would have to be crazy to say no because the alternative is you're going to sue them. So they would extend it. And because of that, the insurance company is on notice that you're continuing to assert this right. You're going to go after the whole back and the replacement cost. And if you don't, if they do not extend the limitation period for a reasonable period of time, you commence suit. You request either breach of contract, declaratory judgment, anticipatory breach, because if you're not going to extend the suit limitation period, basically what you're saying is your rights may accrue after the two-year so, period. So your position is you. that, I take it your position then is that uh, notice is not sufficient. In other words, if, if the insurer declines to extend the two-year period, that you have to bring a suit within the two-year period even if the repairs have not been completed and you've been diligently attempting to do that. Is that, is that the bottom line? Yes, Your Honor. That, that's my position, and that, I believe, is the position of this court in Blitman, and as the court recognized in the Executive Plaza when it said... This is why this case is different in Executive Plaza, because the insured in Executive Plaza did what we told them in Blitman. So they protected their rights, and they commenced suit. To and the that was thwarted to, by the insurance company, which was unfair. To the judge's point, yeah. is there anything in this contract specifically that we have in this case that would prevent the insured from doing that, Preventing. bringing a suit? No, not that I'm aware of. What do you say the, to your adversary's argument that at the pleading stage, 3211 motion stage, that suit would have been eminently dismissible because the contract also requires completion of the work prior to an action. Right. Uh, because if you commence suit before the repairs were completed and you made an allegation that it is impossible to complete the repairs during this period of time. I'm seeking a declaration that this suit limitation provision is not reasonable and fair. Oh, it's a different, it's a declaratory, declaratory judgment. Declaratory judgment, actually. you could. Or anticipatory breach. If the insurance company tells you, we're not going to extend the suit limitation provision. Basically, your rights may accrue later, but we're going to prevent you from suing and, and acting. But is that what Executive Plaza requires, or does Executive Plaza say that the period isn't reasonable if you can't complete the repairs within that time? Well, I, I think it says both, Your Honor. I, said, I, I think well, it's if a it says if it says that the period isn't reasonable, if it can't be completed, then I'm not sure why you would need to bring a, an action along those lines. Doesn't Executive Plaza make that unnecessary? I, I don't think so, and, and the, the problem that gets caused by that is, is what I think was alluded to earlier, is that if someone comes six years later and says, well, it took more than two years to complete but the repairs. But what if, so during the course of trying to get the repairs, the property owner sends in um, updates? Mm -hmm. These are the actions that I have taken. I have been unable to um, get approval or inspections or, and I've had some obstacles with your processing department and names a person. That's not enough if they're not giving you information, it, establishing that there's an impediment yes. to proceeding in that timely fashion. Well, I, I would say reasonably that would be enough for the insurance company to say, Yes, let's extend the suit limitation provision. And if the insurance company is not reasonable, then commencing suit. And I think the next step after that is when the insurance company thwarts your rights by moving to dismiss the claim as either premature or untimely, as this court says, 
it's premature a day before it expires and it's untimely a day after it expires in Executive Plaza. That's just not fair. I mean, you I'm see just, that's when we I'm do having a next. hard time though seeing how you can square, Let, let's assume as Judge Troutman suggests that you are on notice, I realize you might say here it's not the case, but yes. you're on notice, uh, clear notice from the insured that the repairs can't be completed within two years and that that's a reasonable uh, fact. Um, I'm not sure how, needing to go to court prophylactically is, is something that, that is right under Executive Plaza. Maybe you can help me understand that. Uh, yes, because it, either getting the extension or going to court, it, it shortens the timeline. It keeps hold of Okay, the, but the getting repair. an extension, yes. I, I appreciate it, and there may be all kinds of business reasons why that's practical and you're suggesting that's the case. But what I'm asking is, if an extension is denied, how do you square your view that that, that insured, having provided notice, having requested an extension, reasonably having repairs or replacement that take more than two years, still has to bring a suit with Executive Plaza and why that's not unreasonable under Executive Plaza? Be, because I, I believe Executive Plaza pulls in and says Blitman uh, supports the position here because they did in Executive Plaza what Blitman said. They commenced suit, and it was only when they were presented with the catch-22 of the suit being dismissed and then being found untimely later that you need the exception that Executive Plaza provided. It was so it is an unfair. exception in Executive Plaza. It, yes. it, to the last question, it would be an exception that excuses the claimant from having to go through the, the, the rigmarole of filing a suit, getting it dismissed as being untimely or premature, uh, and says if you can provide a, a you know notice if you can show notice to the carrier that completion within the limitations period is unreasonable, we'll we'll let you go on that. We'll let it slide under those circumstances. Yes, Your Honor. So there, it, so I think what we keep going back to about this requirement of a suit under Executive Plaza, it's not really an absolute requirement of notice rejection suit. It can be notice rejection, and then you know you let them. You told them, and you can sue later. Isn't that what Executive Plaza says? I, I believe so. If I, I follow you, Your Honor, it, but it, it, you seem. Uh, I'll, I'll just say it one more time, and then we don't have to belabor this point. But you seem to be implying that not only you know you you can give notice to the carrier that it cannot reasonably completed, the work cannot be completed within the limitations period. They say no, and you seem to be implying that there is then a subsequent requirement that you also commence an action. And my reading of Executive Plaza, and I think some of the questions you've been hearing, say no, that second component, the commencement of a subsequent action, is not necessary if you can later show that it wasn't reasonable to expect work to be done within two years. Yeah, I, I, I do believe that the, the action, commencing the action or getting the extension uh, is a necessary and, and reasonable requirement under Blitman. So suppose the, the two-year limit in the contract had been a two-day limit. Yeah. Would you still need to go to the insurer and ask for an extension? If that's what's written in the contract and yep. you're trying to modify the contract, I, I would say following Blitman, Yes, you should ask for an extension and explain this is unreasonable, and the insurance company would say either yes, we agree because you can't repair, or no, and then it's time to go to the court and say, court, declaratory judgment or, or anticipatory breach of contract, we cannot complete these repairs. So there's no way you could make the unreasonableness argument on the face of a contract. You always are going to have to either get an extension and then go to court because they say no, or you're going to have to get an extension and they say yes. Yes, Your Honor, as, as the first step in the multi-step process, and then the next step in executive. And that's not, we don't find that in the contract. You're drawing that from Blitman and Executive Plaza. Yes, Your Honor. And, and then I would like to just touch upon the exception, which seems to be what uh, my adversary was focusing on here, is th the exception is that we couldn't complete the repairs within the two-year period, and therefore you, you cannot enforce that provision. The allegations within the complaint do not identify anything that would alert 
the insurance company that within two years the repairs could not be made. Unlike in Executive Plaza where there were pages and pages of paragraphs 14 to 23 in the Executive Plaza complaint. Can I ask you, what, what if the nature of the actual damage and the nature of the necessary repairs would on their face make clear that no one could complete it in two years. Would that matter? I, I believe the same requirements would apply, Your Honor, because without some guide rails for the parties to, to follow, this could be a lawsuit that commences six years or ten years after the loss because it just takes more time. Uh, let, let, let's uh, say the damage is to a building that's 50, 50 floors. Yeah. Very large space, right? Square footage on each floor. It's, it's hollowed out. It's it, obvious on its face that this cannot be done in two years, even working around the clock. You right. still say that they cannot proceed just making that kind of an argument. They just asserted that in their complaint. Given the nature of these damages, it's unreasonable to expect that this would be repaired within two years. I, I don't believe so, Your Honor. I, I believe there meet, needs to be more factual allegations as to why it, it could not be repaired within the two years. So, so if you include it in the complaint, I went through, I went to two construction uh, companies, I went to an engineer, they all confirmed this would not be completed within two years. What if she just said that in the complaint? That, that, I believe that would be closer to the standard. But in that circumstance, does she still have to put you on notice, is your view, and ask for an extension? Yes, Your Honor. I believe so. And what if it's your own, uh, let's say, adjuster who's gone there and sends a report back to you and says this is going to take five years minimum? Does she still have to come and ask for an extension? I, I believe so, Your Honor, because, and this is the reason why, the, the claims are adjusted and paid on an actual cash value basis. That means you're paid for the damage to your property, less depreciation. That, that's what gets paid mm -hmm. up front. Most of the time, insureds make the claim, get the actual cash value payment, and you never see them again. Either the actual cash value payment was enough for them to make the repairs, or they decide not to make the repairs and use the money for something else. So you don't know until uh, a claim is made, for replacement cost coverage in what someone says, we're making the claim for replacement cost coverage or we're commencing suit to get the replacement cost hold back. And, and that's an important right. She did notify you, right? The complaint alleges she notified you that she was seeking replacement cost. She, she did not make a, a request within the 180 day period for the replacement cost. And then she didn't do anything within the first two years uh, to alert us to the fact that she was making the repairs and that she was going to seek the replacement cost holdback. There's nothing specific in the allegations uh, in this complaint, and she did not put an affidavit well, she's in She's alleging, I regularly, if not daily, was in contact with the insurance company to try and move this forward. No. And I was obstructed 99% of the time. Yes. What uh, about that kind of an allegation? I, I, I don't believe that. Uh, would, would do it uh, just Why not? Rivera. Be because that's a conclusory allegation that pretty much any plaintiff attorney could copy and paste and, and thwart the uh, provision in the policy. If she details every attempt? If she detailed the attempts and yes. the attempts. Are factual assertions. Factual ass assertions and, and they reasonably link to causing a delay, th that's different. A different story. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. May it please the court, Howard Kronberg for the respondent brokers. Um, Your Honor, I'm happy to say that I'm kind of a bystander on this. <laughs> it's been ably argued by both sides. Um, I submitted kind of a Me Too brief. Um, <laughs> so if the court has no questions for me, I will yield my time and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honors. <clears throat> I'm, I guess I'm baffled by the necessity of providing notice on top of working with your insurance company. 
because this notice claim that is so important doesn't find its way into the insurance contract with a layperson. who well, most people, when they're dealing with their insurance company, when they're getting their building uh, repaired after a four alarm fire that completely destroyed it structurally, uh, structurally through fire and water damage. So in your view under the contract, what if anything did she have to do? She just had to pursue mm -hmm. uh, her, the repairs of the building within a reasonable period of time. Mm -hmm. That is it. The insurance company knew full well as per the allegations because they were working with her throughout. Nicole yeah, and Dimer. You said within a reasonable period of time. There's no time allegations uh, about when this happened, right? We she don't says know. immediately. Everything immediately? She can just blanket that? Well, yes. I mean, you immediately, she immediately began the process of repairing the building. The first step was getting it boarded up. And what did the insurance company do? They sent vendors to board the building up, and they didn't pay them, so there were liens put on the building. Then she couldn't, then that frustrated her ability to get uh, financing. I mean, she was, what she characterizes as immediate may not be what somebody else characterizes as immediate. It might not even have been within the two years. That's what discovery is for, Judge. Is it? I yes. mean, like, we're supposed to just uh, adopt that it could have been within two years, it could have been within five years, it could have been within 24 hours. We're supposed to That's guess. Right. No, you're not guessing. Immediately means immediately. And she, she obviously had immediate, uh, her allegations are that they boarded it up. I mean, when are you boarding up a, a fire, a burnt out fire uh, building? You're boarding up the windows immediately. She, the appraisers are there. The inspectors are there. It's immediately. You, you must construe this uh, pleading liberally and grant her every possible inference. I would note also that this court re, uh, decided Executive Plaza before all this happened. So, so if, so if I can just clarify, your position here is that the reason, if I'm understanding you correctly, that one giving liberal construction to that complaint, all the inferences that one could in favor of the non-movement, accepting all the facts as asserted as true, that one would read this complaint to say that whether or not she could have done it within two years, put that apart for one moment, they they obstructed her ability to even attempt to do so. Am I understanding? That's, that's the gravamen of the complaint. So your position is not that she, it, without that obstruction, that she couldn't do it within two years. That you're not taking that position? Well, she does allege that. In the, in the complaint, it says, even under the best of circumstances, this was a multi-year uh, construction project. So okay. yes, she, she, she covers it both ways. And I would note that Executive Plaza isn't an exception to anything. It, it, we know what the holding is because the court clearly stated, we hold that such a contractual limitation period applied to a case in which the property cannot reasonably be replaced in two years is unreasonable and enforceable. That means you look at it in the rear view. Was it? Well, we also we also know though. I'm, I'm over here. We I, also, I keep getting no no <laughs> worries. I, yeah, yeah, this uh, but we also know that there was a suit brought there, right? In Executive Plaza. Yeah. Yes, and in dicta. At the end, I think what the court was simply saying was this, this decision can stand beside, uh, uh, beside the other without inconsistency because we know what the holding is. The holding doesn't say in Executive Plaza that we hold that a contractual limitation period uh, can be deemed unenforceable if you bring a frivolous lawsuit before, you're, before it can be uh, actually brought under the terms of the contract. It simply says in this case as an example of how uh, absurd the result ordinarily would be, the, it, it's basically a, 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 the insurance company spoke out of both sides of their mouth. It's too early to sue, it's too late. It was simply an example that was given as one of many examples, I would imagine, that can be raised in order to demonstrate to this court that, it was, that the repairs could not be reasonably completed within a time. She has alleged that in her complaint. I think that's sufficient. That's the end of the story. That doesn't mean that she wins. We have a discovery, and they could make a summary judgment motion, but all of this, I think, is premature. Thank you. Thank you.